Hey everybody, oh, that hair, that's a, that's a whole day of being at work. Um, hey, it's, uh, I don't even know what time it is, probably about 10 o'clock at night, and um, I'm Rob Smith. I'm currently still the serving president for the Almond Glen Board of Directors and uh, have been on the board since 2013, which is kind of at this point my uh, my thing is that I've, I've been here long enough to I uh, have an idea about how some of the decisions go in the neighborhood. I, I know that some of the historical references, I can look back on stuff and say, you know, well, the way we did it at one time was this, and this is why we did it that way and that kind of stuff and, and kind of answer some of those questions and, um, you know, just kind of be there to fill in the blanks as time goes by. Um, I got, I was, this my ninth year on the board. So, uh, recently we had to make a decision about townhome trash and, Sometimes it's been easier for me over the years to just do a quick video like this where you can see my face, hear my voice, uh, the, the inflection in my voice, the, the tone, and get an idea for um, where I'm coming from. And because and, you know, sometimes text messages don't work. So I was reading some of the posts on Facebook and stuff. And honestly, I have learned one of the things that I've picked up over the years is responding to every little, every little post and everything on Facebook and even the emails we get and stuff. Sometimes it's not the best option. Years ago, one of the guys in the neighborhood who worked in, um, like as a publicist at one point, he, he told me, this is probably 2014, stop responding. Um, a lot of times people throw their thoughts out into the universe and they're, and they're kind of thinking of the HOA as this big corporate giant and they're just throwing it out there and they don't honestly even though they, they, want, a, they want some feedback, they don't really expect feedback. And sometimes it's not best to give feedback, but there are times where I think it's it's useful to give some some feedback. So, real quickly, um, and this is something that comes up quite a bit, and I get it. So uh, I can give you kind of some insight as to why and where and what and all that. Um, the questions about the townhome trash. Um, you know, several of us on the board, and I think I said it during the meeting. Several of us on the board have been through this townhome trash issue before with dumpsters and bringing in the service that we did for a while there, and then the trash company went out of business and left us high and dry and bringing in another company. So we've been through this to the point that when the process started, we knew instantly with a little side discussion between a couple of us, it's going to be dumpsters. We know that's where it's going to end up. We've got two new board members uh, who we, we put on midterm, uh, Boyce and Matt. Boyce being a single family town homeowner and um, Matt being a town homeowner, and they've not been through this whole process with us. They both have experience and backgrounds that actually are very suited to, to helping out with the board, but they've not been through this particular process with us of bringing in a vendor for a specific thing. So, you know, for instance, if they came in tomorrow and they were like, you know, it'd be a good idea. We see a new landscaper. We'd chuckle to ourselves because we've been down this path and we'd let them go through the whole process of trying to get bids and they'd come back and be like, it's so expensive and be like, yeah. We know, but we let them go through the process so that they can, one, maybe they find something we haven't found before, and two, so that they can bring us, or they can kind of have that insight. So um, if you're not on the board, you've not been through this process, you don't you don't really know what the process involves, and, and I get it. From the outside looking in, you're, you're like, why do these decisions get made? So all that to say that internally, we, we do try to vet these things out the best we can, even if it means going through a long drawn out process. I mean, we did a 37 minute meeting the other night that really could have been a two minute meeting. And honestly, didn't even have to have a meeting. We had the meeting so that people could see us having a discussion about it. We had most of that discussion um, in a text me message group before that meeting ever happened. And then we just had the discussion again uh, live and, and kind of worked through those things. Um, I didn't even realize that Having the valet service was still an option with the with value, so we had kind of missed that. So sometimes those conversations are worthwhile. Um, common things that come up. First of all, you hear all the time, do the town homeowners have any kind of representation on the board? They should have representation. Well, they represent a percentage of the neighborhood. There's 295 homes, 64 of them are town homes. So one way you could look at it is you could say, well, to get equal representation, you do a percentage um, of the neighborhood and you say that percentage should be represented by town homeowners. Well, they technically wouldn't really have full representation. There's five board members according to the way we do it right now. And if we made two of them town homeowners, the three single family homeowners would always outvote them anyways. So there's no real fair way, fair way to make the town homeowners have like some sort of equal representation. 
So instead what the boards have done over the years is try to lean towards what town homeowners who've served on the board, which has been three now, town homeowners who serve on the board, three, okay, I'm trying to like figures, um, serve on the board, give us input and, and we kind of lean towards what they want because it represents them more than it does us. So if you've got one town homeowner on the board who's like, I really think this is the best option for us based on what my neighbors and I are saying, we'll kind of go with them. So Matt's got a, a big, uh, big amount of pull when it comes to town home issues, as far as I'm concerned, I think as far as the other board members are concerned too. Um, the other thing that comes up a lot is, um, well, maybe we should do a poll or we should get input from the owners in the neighborhood, which we do try to do. Sometimes we do it through social media. We get emails from people. There are people who regularly are involved and they just kind of behind the scenes, they communicate with a couple of us that are on the board and, you know, people that they've developed relationships with who've been here in the neighborhood for all these years. They communicate with us and they just, they don't publicly talk. Um, and, and sometimes we don't talk about um, their, what they say uh, out in the open. You know, they give us an opinion. We kind of listen to it. Um, and it's a it's an opinion from their perspective with their input. It has nothing to do with like all the other issues. So it's just one piece of the puzzle. Um, but people say, well, why don't you do a poll? Well, we're not required to. And the reason for that is in July, there's a board meeting. That's what's actually, it's an annual meeting. The annual meeting's for the members. The board meeting's for the board. At the annual meeting, we vote for five people. So the way we do it. Um, and those five people then make all the decisions for the neighborhood for the rest of the year. The boards in Almond Glen have always tried to kind of get input from other people. Sometimes we've done polls. Sometimes we've had special meetings, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, you don't have to. Um, you voted for your representatives in the form of board members, and those board members then do what they think is the best thing for the overall neighborhood. So when you have somebody say, and not to pick on anybody's particular comment, but when you have somebody say, um, well, four people sent in emails and that's all you went off of. Not totally true. Four people sent in emails, a couple people called us, a couple other people talked with Matt from the town homes, boys talked to a few people. The guys went door to door knocking on doors, but people don't know who they are. So they probably think they're some form of, uh, um, you know, door to door salesmen. So they don't answer the door. So these things all come together, but there's a lot of little things that go into it. Um, but ultimately, I mean, it really kind of comes down to uh, what's going to work best for the neighborhood. There's no good option with the dumpsters thing and everything, but um you can't have a poll for everything. You can't even get good input from people. You don't have to respond to just by email for us to know what your thoughts are. If you posted something on Facebook, we probably read it, even if we don't always respond to it. So um, it's not like you have uh, taxation without representation type deal or something going on. You got representation. You got five people you voted on the board and you vote them on every year. Um, this year, we had to pick two people to serve but I think we picked two good people based off the information we have uh, available and the people who are willing to serve. So that's kind of where we are with it. Hey, like I said, sometimes I think it's easier to hear my voice, see my face and go, oh, okay, I see where he's coming from. It's not any kind of anger or hate where I'm so mad that people wouldn't agree with our decision. It's our decision. We do what we can with it. We make our best choices. And then, you know, if we run again in July and you don't like the decisions we make, you vote us out. Um, the way it goes. So uh, this year, for those of you who stuck around this far into it, this year has been my least, my the year that I participated the least. I have been overloaded the last couple years um, with my, my regular world around me. I've given the board nine years. Like I said, I think it's nine years. And I'm going on to, I'm trying to decide July. I think in July I'll probably run again and, and serve if people want me to. But I don't know that I'll serve specifically as the president. I might ask somebody else to take on that role. And, and it really, it doesn't really matter. The president's just supposed to sign off documents and run the meetings. Um, but that that role is traditionally, traditionally um, taken on a lot more uh, work over the years. And Eric Barnes has really stepped up and taken over a lot for me over the last at least two years. You know, definitely this year a ton. Um, the project started getting spread out the last couple of years, but Eric's really done a lot. So hopefully he'll serve again. His information and efforts as the treasurer are as good as Sydney's and better in some ways. Sydney's over for years, for those of you who remember him. He was awesome. 
And I would always say every year, I don't care if you vote for me or not, I vote for Sydney, you know, beat me up on the backside if you want. So we'll see how it goes. But for anybody who feels like ultimately we're not, uh, we're not taking your thoughts into or, or something into consideration. We are, we just, we have like a huge, big, you know, over 30,000 foot view of everything that we're looking at. And then, um, you know, sometimes your view might be your front porch. And if your view is your front porch, what sounds great to you might not sound so great to your neighbor. For those of you who were leaning towards the 96 gallon trash cans, that's a lot of big trash cans in the townhomes, um, 64 of them. And you're not maybe considering your neighbor who lives in the middle of the townhomes, who's got to either drag a trash can all the way around or drag it through their house or just say, forget it. I can't do that. And just leave it on their front porch all the time. So that would not be aesthetically pleasing would make the look neighborhood look pretty trashy and would ultimately not be good. So unfortunately for now, uh, this is where we are. We'll go back to the dumpsters. We are going to keep it at a one year contract. Nobody likes long contracts. And also we're not sure what we're going to do. And then we'll, we'll figure it out from there. So it's a constantly evolving process. There's a new board every year that starts off in July. Sometimes it's people who've served in the past. Sometimes it's new people. So my thanks to Matt and Boyce who jumped on board this year and picked up uh, trying to learn everything as we go. Um, definitely my thanks to Eric for all of his effort and to Virginia who has continued to serve. Uh, she's, I think she's a year behind me on, on years of service. And, and she actually, that first year she served on the, we had a, uh, we had a committee back then that put together events and stuff. And that's been taken over by a couple ladies in the neighborhood who, if you don't know about their, um, I, I guess we've, we're calling it a club nowadays. The, um, dang, I wish I could think of it off the top of my head. I'm just standing here rambling, I know, but I'm thinking of, I cannot think of the name of it. The events club. I'll, I'm going to put a link, I'm going to put a link to their, to their page on our, on our Facebook or on our website below the, with the comments here. It's the events group or whatever. I can't, I just can't think of it off the top of my head, but those uh those folks have done that completely on their own where they've said hey you know what we want to we want to have events and parties and get togethers in neighborhood we want to do stuff so um i've donated before i recommend throwing some money at it every once in a while you know it's 10 20 bucks out of your pocket that you throw towards it and you know then they put on an event it's you know you help put it on so they're the ones doing all the hard work of putting it together you're just throwing a few dollars trust me putting events together over the years uh, for the neighborhood, which I used to do a bunch of those and, and I've done them before. I remember one board member one year, he he's not no longer lives in the neighborhood, but he, he told me uh, I'd rather just enjoy the event than have to put in all the work all the time. And I'm like, me too. So um, putting on the events, setting them up, planning them, cleaning up. Personally, I'd rather throw $20, $30 every once in a while and let my daughter go down and enjoy an event guilt-free knowing that I helped out. Um, and I promise you, they would have rather almost had me down there setting up tables and pulling things down because it's a whole lot easier to toss a few dollars at the event than it is to put them together. So hats off to the folks who do that stuff and are putting those events on and at least show them support with a quick donation. They're using the money um, for the events. The money's coming out of their own pockets. I've seen how the money gets spent at times. They're not stealing your money. They're not getting rich off of it. They're not going to Tahiti or anything like that. Those ladies are taking that money and putting it back into the neighborhood. And on top of that, they're, spend, they're, they're spending their own money at times. So support them. Um, I'll put a link down everywhere that I put this thing. So that's 14 minutes. I'm out. If you have any questions, feel free to message me, almondglennhoa at gmail.com or message me on Facebook. Again, it's Rob Smith or it might be Robert Smith on Facebook. Um, you can find me. I'm not hard to find. Take care. Have a good night.